Good morning, folks. Welcome to the Rangers Reviews morning briefing on Tuesday, the 4th of January. Uh, I'm Joshua Barry, joined by Johnny McFarlane as ever, here to keep you up to, up to date with all uh, all what's happening in this winter break period. Johnny, how are you this morning? Yeah, very good, uh, Joshua. Looking forward to another day of action. Um, although we don't have any actual, actual football. Mm. <clears throat> Apologies, sorry. I'm still, I'm still hit with this COVID cough. It is an absolute nightmare. And um, we don't have any actual football to look forward to, so uh, we have to concentrate on what seems to be happening in the transfer window. And, and listen, there seems to be plenty going on, doesn't there? There does absolutely, and we'll get to that um, in a moment. But to be fair, I think this is the last week where we've not got football. I'm just looking at my calendar, seeing as I, mm. I'm in the mid, I'm still in that kind of January phase where I don't know what day it is, but. Um, I think next week we will have football on the horizon. So at least, you know, yes. at least we have some big games to look forward to. And I'll use this uh, first minute as well to just remind you to hit the notification bell if you're watching on YouTube, folks. Keep up to date with us whenever we go live. Right, Johnny, let's uh, speak about some of the things that are happening um, at the club. Firstly, uh, Nambi Offabor um, put up a, a Instagram post last night, which uh, was detailing his year, obviously, Supporters will know that um, he's, he's not been able to play for Rangers yet due to um, Ill, Ill health. Um, has been going through tests and uh, that's kept him out since he arrived in the summer. But it seems like, Johnny, from that, um, what he's put up and obviously players you know, normally use Instagram and, and whatnot now as their means to communicate uh, with supporters. It seems like he's kind of on the road back and and, uh, and if indeed uh, that is the case, it would be great to have him because, you know, beyond all the everyone w wishing him well and wanting him to, to be fit and healthy, there's obviously a really good player there that supporters would be excited to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, we should tread carefully. Um, having spoken to someone at the club about this, um, I know that they are wanting to make sure that he's got absolutely the best care possible mm -hmm. and that it, it won't be rushed back, basically. Um, so, you know, they're, they're treating this very, very, very seriously, given the nature of the complaint that he's got, um, with the heart issue and, and, you know, uh, I think, uh, anyone who watched the Euros and saw what happened to Christian Eriksen, that is a, a real underlining of the seriousness of these, these issues and why, you know, you've got to make sure you're absolutely spot on in terms of the way you treat them. So I know that the club are looking at it really, really seriously, taking it really, really um, steadily and making sure that, that Namdi Offbar gets the, the absolute best treatment that he possibly can before before coming back. But it was really good to read that Instagram post, Joshua. Um, a number of things um, in it there um, that were that, that stood out to me. The fact that he said that doctors, and I think he said multiple doctors, yeah. told him he was lucky to be alive, um, which shows you the seriousness of the issue. Yeah. And the fact he seems so determined to get back, mm -hmm. which... Um, which obviously came across loud and clear. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that he said, you know, that he is he is absolutely keen and absolutely uh, focused on making sure he gets back to his best. And then you just got to hope for the lad because he's he's just a young kid. I think he's mm -hmm. twenty two. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, at the start of his career, that that he can get himself um, into a situation where he can get playing again. But but look, the most important thing when you've got a situation like this is the player. Mm -hmm. um, you know, football, we love football. It's a hugely uh, important thing for, for everyone uh, who loves football in terms of your mental health, in terms of giving you a boost, in terms of um, enjoyment, entertainment. But all these things are secondary to, to, to real life, really. Uh, and this is a real-life issue for, for Namdi Ovobor. This is, could affect the rest of his life. So that has to become at the fore forefront, and that is the most important factor in this. So, um, yeah, I suppose it's one we just have to keep an eye on. Um, I think every single person who's associated with the Rangers family, whether it be a supporter, a reporter like us covering the club, you've got your fingers crossed for the young lad. It's as simple as that, just on a human a human level. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and, and thank you to everyone <coughs> well, getting in touch, uh, saying good morning. Do uh, fire in any questions. We'll do our very best to get to them. Uh, later in the show. Um, right, Johnny, we spoke yesterday about the Nathan Patterson fee being agreed, but you said this this might take a little bit of time. Um, you, you said that the, the player was still to, to have his medical and agree personal terms, and while I don't think anyone expects that to 
kind of derail anything. Obviously, these things don't always happen um, really quickly. There's a lot to go through um, in, in this process. I'm, we're guessing that's where this move is at the moment, um, and, it, and it could take, who knows, another day or so until that, that final um, stretch is agreed. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, these things can progress quickly. Um, I've seen various reports suggest that it could be done as early as today. Um, I don't think that's impossible. Um, but um, I think it's more likely to be uh, later in the week, whether that be tomorrow or, or, or Thursday. Um, but yeah, I mean, he was down in Merseyside yesterday getting his medical. So provided that that's gone off without a hitch, I don't have any information on that, but I, I can't imagine there being anything with Nathan Patterson. You never know, though. I think, listen, we, we, we all saw what happened with uh, with Motherwell when they had David Turnbull, a player who'd not had any injury problems throughout his entire career, and then all of a sudden, here you go, you've got a serious knee injury that you're not aware of that's just about to hit you, um, which derailed the whole thing. So, um, you know, fingers crossed, touch wood and all the rest of it, nothing like that happens with, with Patterson. Um, but you just don't know until these things are all going through and they're they're very, very thorough nowadays. And uh, we'll see how that pans out. But I, I think the expectation is that this move will be announced in the next day or two. Yeah. And something that's been on the site, that is on the site today, uh, Johnny, both uh, Gary Carmody writing about it and myself in a slightly different way, is, <coughs> again, the, the discussion around this deal and, and why, um, why Patterson is moving on. Uh, Gary chooses to kind of go with the... The viewpoint of there, there's a reason that this move, a 19-year-old, your best academy player in so many years, uh, moving to the Premier League, there's a reason that this is less painless than it might ought to be. You said a similar thing yesterday in the site. Um, and I've looked at the uh, the underlying numbers of, of James Tavenier, who has had the highest on-ball value. And if you don't know what on-ball value is, it effectively measures every single action on the pitch. So it gives um, a value to how... Uh, players contribute um, in all phases of the game. James Tavenier has, has had the highest number in the Rangers squad three of the last four seasons, had the highest in the league two of the last four, basically um, showing that it would take a lot of money, Johnny, to to replace a player of his influence. And I know we touched on this yesterday, but the continuing theme seems to be a recognition of this is another um, challenge, if you will, that Tavenier, James Tavenier has, has overcome. And although Nathan Patterson does leave Rangers, people would have liked him to play more. It is relatively painless, as Gary says, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's totally painless. I think we discussed this yesterday, and uh, mm -hmm. you can see Scott Kearney saying there, if he goes, he goes with Rangers fans' blessing. Uh, you know, and, and that that's absolutely the case um, in terms of the people I've spoken to, and the information that I've seen on social media from from thousands of fans responding to tweets. Um, that I've put out. So yeah, I think there's no doubt about that, uh, that Joshua, and, and that's all because the quality of James Tavernier at that right back slot, and people understand that there's a, this is a pragmatic solution to a problem that's dogged Rangers for, for a year. We've been talking about it since the website started. Um, how do you accommodate these two players? Because you need to accommodate one of them or sell one of them. It's as simple as that. You can't have a player of the quality of Nathan Patterson sitting on the bench every game. You just can't, it just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I think absolutely the this is the right decision. Um, Tavernier's, I mean, I said it yesterday on the video, I'll say it again, he's a, a phenomenon. You know, uh, I was, you know, I've had lots of Celtic fans coming on to me, you know, telling me that that's a ridiculous comment to make and all that, but Honestly, uh, Joshua, I think what's ridiculous is that they're even questioning that. The numbers are absolutely there, um, and I would stand by that 110%. Five years of performance at the top or near the top of every player in the Scottish division, whether they be wingers or strikers or whatever, if you're talking about delivery of numbers, James Ta Tavernier is unlike anyone that, that I've seen in my time in the game. Now, numbers and, and and how we judge players based on assists and on-ball value and um, progressions and things like that, that's relatively new. So I can't go back and say, well, Gary Stevens, who was a, an unbelievable right back for Rangers before you were born, uh, Joshua, you know, I'll, I'll take his numbers and compare them to Tavernier. You can't, you can't do that. Um, but what I would say is I'd be surprised if any Rangers fullback in my lifetime 
has produced anything like the numbers that James Tavernier has. It's quite incredible. And uh, the guy's simply irreplaceable. And it won't be until he leaves that people will realise what Rangers have had. And, you know, there's a... I get the sense that there's like a narrative around James Tavernier that he can't defend and all that. Um, that's slightly taken root. And I, and, I, and I think that's part of the reason he doesn't get the credit he deserves. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've got to be honest, I'll, I'll just say this up front. I don't actually even buy that. I think 1v1, one, one one, he's an excellent defender. He's no problem as 1v1. If you put him up against Martin Boyle, no, he's not got problems. Where he has issues sometimes is switching off at the back post. You know? Yeah. Um, he gets caught going forward. Well, he's told to, to burst forward. The question is, is he getting caught under G- Giovanni Van Bronckhorst's system? You know, when he's not getting asked to go forward all the time, he's not being caught in, eight, in, in nine games. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe that's because he is actually a lot better than people give him credit for. Honestly, I would go to the bat for Tavernier all day long against anyone. The numbers are there. It's not a subject. It's, it's not even subjective. Mm-hmm. Um, people come at this with their eyes or with their own agendas based around who they support. Uh, Tavernier, yeah. and, and wax and lyrical about Tavernier, there is nothing that anyone can really come back at you with on that because the data, the facts, they're all there for anyone I would see who wants to have a look at them. And that's yeah. why Patterson's that's why Patterson's gone. And yeah. that's why yeah. Yeah. a 16 million pound player rising to 16 million pound player mm-hmm. is not getting in the team ahead of him. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 I think there's been a lot of improvement with him as well, isn't there? Because I think Early on in his his career, I I think he's a better one on one defender now than he was say when he used to go up against Jordan Jones at Rugby Park and mm. um and whatnot um and I and I think that's to his his complete credit. But the game that stood out for me recently, Johnny, was away at Tynecastle. <coughs> he was playing with Fashion Sakala in front of him, um you know not with the kind of the compact midfield that he would have been used to previously under Gerrard and. Defending that back post where Gary Mackay Stevens and Barry Mackay were both attacking, and and I thought he was absolutely excellent. So, yeah, to completely agree with you, and it's just another kind of in a strange roundabout way, another challenge he's overcome. Even though I'm sure Patterson is someone that he's assisted uh, his development a lot, and um, and wants the very best for him. But ultimately, the right back slot will be his for another good few years. We mentioned yesterday that you could you could see him playing for another you know four or five years in the Rangers top. Um, undoubtedly, obviously, he's played a lot of games in the in the recent past. But you look at his injury record, how often he's been available, and you see someone I think that's totally committed to um, their career at Ibrox, which is great to see. Um, it leads us on to to touch Josh. On- just before we do go on, right? I think this is important. There's a couple of questions here. This is one I think I would like you to get stuck into here from Chris Smith. Why are teams not banging down the door from Tav? I think this is a fair point. If his numbers are so stellar, why hasn't why isn't it him that's basically been Attracted to the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Well, I, th- I think like age obviously comes into it, um, but I think it's I think it's a unique situation. And this is you said in your piece yesterday when a deal works for all parties, you have to shake hands. And the the the, the thing is with um, Tavernier and this Rangers team is he's so important in all phases of it. Now that might not be he might go down to a Premier League club and they might have a central midfielder that does all the distribution, or they might have less of the ball, so they don't need to rely on him in all kind of phases of. Of the pitch as much if you will but at rangers it's got to a point as i say with the on-ball value over the last few years not just as numbers in terms of goals and assists but getting the ball into those areas um that to replace those to replace those numbers would be would be really difficult so i think why are teams not doing that again i said in my piece today if if tavernier was a better defender i think he's a good defender i don't think he's um yeah, you, there obviously is a weakness in his game. Otherwise, he would be playing at the top, such as his attacking ability. And his attacking ability obviously supersedes his defensive ability. You know, he does get caught with the odd switch of play. We have seen him get caught at the back post, but that's the reality of a player playing in the Scottish Premiership and, and not the Premier League. So whether it be that clubs look at that and think, um, you know, combined with his age, um, that that. There's a there's there's a weakness there that they don't want to to have in their team. I I, I think it's more of a case of he's so well suited to Rangers. This yeah. system has been so accustomed to him because he's so good. He, he's at the very top of the level that he's playing for, and of course it's not as if he doesn't um, have weaknesses. But again, what he does in all other phases of the of the pitch kind of kind of supersedes that. So 
for me, I, I totally agree with you, Johnny. I think um, he's a player that, although he's had uh, little lulls now and again, in general, he's had a pretty good season, delivered in big moments. For, for me, he continues to, you look at him stepping up to take important penalties this season when he's missed important penalties in the past. And I think what you see with Tavernier is a kind of consistent progression, a consistent progression as a, as a captain as well and a leader. Um, and, and that is obviously a big factor as well as in, in why Patterson's gone down gone down south because to phase out Tavernier, I just don't think was was valuable. I don't think it was ever really in the discussion. And obviously the two playing together never materialised. So um, that's the situation yeah. we have. I mean, what, what I would say, Josh, I think you nailed it there when you talked about him being perfect for Rangers. And I just want to develop that idea a little bit. There are some players who just work in a certain team. It just makes sense for, for, for more than one reason. And I think James Tavernier is one of these players. You've got Malky here saying he's going down south, he would probably be average at best. Well, it's a much higher standard. So I don't disagree with you. I'm not saying James Tavernier is going to go down uh, having wax lyrical about him and become you know the best right back in the Premier League. No. Nathan Patterson could become that because he's got the development there mm -hmm. to, to, to build into that player. Um, but playing for a Rangers side where you completely dominate possession for 70% in every game, you're not going to replicate that anywhere down south unless you go and play for Man City. Yeah. And I think he would actually probably look actually quite good at Man City. You know, he would probably be okay there. Um, but he's not going to get a move to Man City because he's not good enough. So he would end up in a, in, a, in a team at the top level of the Championship or the bottom level of the Premier League. And in those games and in those teams, he's not going to have a lot of the ball. He's going to be probably in a team where they have 40% of the ball. That totally does not suit James Tavernier, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So the question is of how good he is and all the rest of it and, and, and how good he would be at another club. It, it's kind of moot unless you replicate the similar circumstances that it has at Rangers. Mm -hmm. And the circumstances he has at Rangers, and all credit to Mark Warburton for, for noticing this when he brought him in, are perfect for the kind of player that, that, that Tavernier is. And I think that's why he's not moved. Because there's a number of factors in his game that if you take him to a higher level, they might be exposed. And, and clubs have been reticent about that. Believe me, clubs have been scouting James Tavernier for a long time. Clubs have been close. I know for a fact that clubs have been watching him, that they've looked at him closely, and they've just maybe decided, mm, not sure about that. Not sure about that element. Plus, Tavernier's very happy. Plus, it would have cost a fair amount of money to, to ever get him out of Ibrox. Um, so, I'm not sure this... I would defend them to the hilt on this. and I, I, just, I just think this, this context to all these sort of discussion points. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, I mean, listen, Malky, I, 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 you know, obviously I respect your opinion. But I think most players, to be fair, if you take them out of the Rangers team and you put them in the Premier League they're going to struggle to be the the kind of influence they are for Rangers in the Premier League because of all these factors that I've outlined and because the, the standard is so high. Sorry, Josh, I've sort of taken over the, the run. No, of no, this. I, I, I'm, I gonna, agree, I'm I, going to throw it back to you now. I agree, that's fine. And, and uh, I think we're both on the same page about Tavernier. So that's absolutely fine with me. We'll just touch finally, Johnny, on um, the cover for Tavernier, I guess, now looking ahead to the season. We've got a scout report up on New York City's uh, and US international James Sands, who is quite versatile, probably mainly regarded as a central defender, has played in central field, covered at right back for New York uh, in, in the season they won the MLS Cup under former Celtic manager Ronnie Dyla. Do you think that, I mean, I, I tend to think alone would be probably the most realistic for the rest of the season. We spoke yesterday about, about um, someone coming in who is going to acknowledge they're not going to be first choice right back. You've mentioned Leon Balogun. Uh, are you still of the opinion that that perhaps Rangers don't need to, to to seek cover in the market? Do you think Sands could be a good addition if if only on loan for a few months? Well, you, you can't have too much cover, especially in this COVID mm -hmm. um, situation. But but I mean, I don't think Rangers need to cover him. I, I, I think with Balogun there, I don't think Balogun's going to get a lot of game time anyway. <clears throat> so I think he could do that job. And then you've got the young guy um, whose name escapes me in the B team. Divine. Sorry. Divine. Divine, yeah, sorry. Um, who, who's 18 and, and, you know, it's probably a little bit too early for him, but uh, at a push could come in. Um, so so I don't think uh, Rangers are desperately needing cover. Um, but listen, as I say, 
you, you get you get hit with COVID and you need you need players. So uh, he's obviously someone who's very versatile. Can play in a back three. Can play in a back four. Even can play in mm-hmm. central midfield. Can play it right back. Uh, Josh, I mean, am I wildly out on a limb here? I've not watched a bit of this guy play. I've read your scout report. He sounds a little bit like Matt Polster. I think he's better, but I know what you mean. He's he's well. The, the interesting I was reading a bit about him and and the, the the phrase that was banded about a few times was specific versatility. And often we look at versatility as a negative and and an ability to nail down a specific position. But I think what he gives you, or he seemed to give Dyla last season, is the ability to to actually do what Rangers do quite a lot have or had done under Van Bronckhorst to have three men in the build up to to get the ball into the the next phase of the pitch. Um, very good at intercepting, <coughs> recovering the ball. Not a progressive passer or a, prog- a progressive carrier. Maybe that's something that would come in, come out of his game more if it was um, in, intended to. I, I think looking at him, looking at the, the height he defends, even in midfield again, comparing that to what he was doing at Rangers, I think it, it quite it could quite suit him coming into the defence, um, where he would need to improve playing the ball forward a little bit. The responsibility would be increased on him. Um, doing that, the type of game he comes into would be different. You know, look at the last game Rangers played two 0 against St Mirren at home, and the 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 kind of small percentage of the pitch that was used for large uh, for large spaces of that game. So I I think that would need to be adapted and improved. But um, he certainly has a lot of good raw attributes there. He's played quite a few times for his country at centre back. The US are a good uh, footballing team. Um, at international level. So a lot of raw attributes. Uh, the, the sporting director said recently that he could be one that moves on this summer. Um, we've seen players from the MLS come for a short-term loan before um, over to over to Europe. We've also obviously seen a lot of, we, we, you're seeing now a couple of, his name escapes me, but Ausberg have just bought um, an American striker um, who whose name escapes me, but who's a very promising player. So yeah, one to watch would be would be interesting i think predominantly predominantly would be brought into that center half area but could well cover it right back um which may well be what we need as you say with with the covid um isolation and whatnot these days you can probably never have too big a squad and uh rangers supporters are certainly grateful to have balag in there the last time that that happened um so yeah. we shall see um but that's over on the, the website as well a full scout report on on james sands with all his his stats, his uh, graphs, and uh, also some snippets from in-game. And we've also got some more uh, discussion about Nathan Patterson over on the site. If you want to read about James Tavernier's numbers that me and John have been bleating on about, then you can read that as well. Just two ninety nine dollars a month um, to, to get content like that every single day. Um, we'll be back tomorrow morning, which is Wednesday, I believe, Johnny, if I eventually catch up on my I'm day. off. Oh, okay, well, I'll... I'll get, I'm finally getting some loot days. Feet oh, up. Well, I'll, I'll be. I'm going to go and see Spider Man, Josh. I'm going to go and see Spider Man mm-hmm. No Way Home, which I've not seen yet. Which, because I've been ravaged by COVID, I've not been able to go out and actually see. So I've managed to avoid spoilers for for quite a while. So no spoilers in the comments for Spider Man, please, people. I will get very upset if you do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm I'm absolutely looking forward to it. Good. Well, I hope you enjoy it. I'll be back tomorrow, folks. Speak to you then. Until then, enjoy the rest of.